Hi folks, this is my fourth video on the Stuart Golf Q Follow Trolley. Now if you haven't seen the previous three, I would suggest you go back and watch them because they all run in order and this is a continuation of the third one. If you can't be bothered doing that, I'll tell you that at the end of the last one, I'd done two rounds on a single charge of my home course and I was away to try a third, which is what I do next. Just teed off on the fourth hole. I uh, started the round today with 43%. Currently at, you can see that, 39%. So looking good so far. The positive of doing this on my own course is the last, well the 16th hole is massively downhill and the 17th and 18th are pretty flat. So if it does run out, my pushing won't be too bad. We'll see how we get on. I'll keep updating as I go. That's now 10 holes down. Um, all still fairly flat holes when we get into the slightly more hilly section of the course. However, still 29%, so looking hopeful so far. So I'm now up at the highest point of the course. I've just finished the 15th hole and starting to come down the hill on 16. Just check the battery app. And I don't know if you can see that one, but we're now at 16% with a kind of red warning. Um, now I know the battery goes to 5% and then cuts off, um, but like I said, this is all downhill and flat from here on in so hopefully I'm going to be safe but I'll let you know at the end that's 18 holes down successfully um, cart's still going just checking the app and 12% um, so in summary I can get three full rounds at my home course just a way out to play today but before I do that I thought I'd show you this so this arrived in the post um, last week. It's the ball holder for the Q-series um, from Stuart Golf. Comes in a lovely packet, much the same as a pack of golf balls. Uh, it holds two balls and maybe slightly over packaged for what it is. Looks nice though. Um, clips onto the, the two accessory points there, so pop, pop, and then you can just slot your Balls in there, and they are secured. Uh, the X series had three holes for holding balls on the handle built into it already, and uh, one of them was potentially taken up with an umbrella holder if you chose to use it. So you had two balls. Um, so that's something I've really missed on this. So hopefully this makes up for it. Um, balls ready for a reload when you hit them in the water. Uh, this cost ten pounds. Something else I have on I've had on the trolley since day one. Again, another accessory I bought. These. And now you get two of these, uh, ten pounds as well. And this is just like a, a generic clip, hooks onto the same accessory points. I've got one on the other side just now. And you can hang your towel from it or anything you desire. Um you've probably seen my first few videos, I've had my towel flopping about on this. Um so again, quite a useful thing for relatively little money. Um Here's something quite annoying. So when you try and put your bag on, obviously you want to put the base of it there. So you put that down and then it springs back up. So you can't really put your bag down without that being that way, otherwise you can't get it around it. So you can end up having to pop your foot on it or something and then place your bag on it. So this is what we call here in Scotland a drich day. Now drich is cold, wet, windy, dull and that's exactly what we've got today proper miserable i um, started off all right full waterproofs on now and um, sadly i don't have my umbrella with me because i don't have anywhere to put it because the umbrella holder for this trolley is continually out of stock uh, on the plus side i've got my water fully waterproof bag and um, so that'll help keep everything in there dry um, as you can maybe see the balls are still on the holder um, something that's kind of bothering me maybe, or something I'm slightly worried about, is when we do eventually get an umbrella holder, have a look here, it screws into here. Now, if these are that flexible, what's the umbrella holder going to be like? Um, with a bit of wind behind it. I've been walking along here seeing people playing with uh, power caddies and things with the umbrella holder continually attached to their buggy as they walk 
that's not something I would do, I would probably put it in just to hold it while I was playing my shot. But, I don't know, given the wind today, even with this old canopy umbrella, I can't take that structure out of hold the umbrella going about without snapping. Um, look forward to getting one eventually and trying it out though. I did a little video at the end of the round yesterday um, when it was pouring rain. Uh, unfortunately, it's cropped. But what I was basically saying was how dirty the trolley was, it was covered in grass, it was all wet and disgusting and saying how good a benefit the bag would be um, to put the trolley in your car and what a mess it would make. So let's have a look inside the bag. It's been sitting overnight, kind of drying off. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's, it's going to be useful. Let's take this out. So the trolley is needing a good clean. But hopefully you can see in the bottom of there, what's fallen off. It's like a little lawn in the bottom corner there, if you can see that, hopefully. Um, yeah, uh, definitely a useful addition. I mean, handfuls of grass that would otherwise be all over the boot of my car. So that's good. Uh, I'm gonna take the trolley outside and give it a wee brush before putting it back in. And obviously tip this out outside. Well worth the money, I'd say. I've uh, had the trolley out in the garden and given it a wee brush down with this uh, brush here that I use for the wheels on my bike and it's uh, taken the, the worst of the dirt off um, and the, the sand and grass and things. Um, it's looking pretty good to be honest. Uh, I used to take my X series out and uh, polish it every now and again because I'm quite sad and it had this painted finish that I was always scared would get scratched whereas this one has the kind of microcellular finish it doesn't show scratches the same so I shouldn't need to worry about that um, I will actually take the wheels off probably after another few rounds and give them a proper clean because they're the one bit you can't really get to very well with a brush um, but I'm not doing that every round uh, something a little concerning here I don't know if you can see this I'm kind of shining a torch on hopefully you can uh, the wheel bearing has rust on it now the rear stabilizer on this trolley has only done a few rounds and that's its first one in the wet, and it's got rust on it already after less than 24 hours. Uh, the one on the other side doesn't, um, so I'll keep an eye on that, see what happens. Something else I noticed while giving the trolley a brush down is that. Now, that's how we divot out of the carbon there. And uh, when you look at folding the trolley down, what pairs up with it is this sort of circular bit here. So that's obviously digging into the trolley when it's folded up. So that's a bit disappointing. Again, I'll have to keep an eye on that because, like I say, I like to keep these things in, in good condition and that's kind of going to eat at me, to be honest. <laughs> bit sad, yeah, but hey-ho. Um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that and see what happens, see how it develops and if it gets worse. All right, little challenge here, see which one climbs better. We've got the Q follow and an X7 particularly steep hill here. The uh, Q follow managing no problem. You can see the rear wheels on the stabiliser hitting the ground, it's rolling along, it's helping it up the hill. No problem at all. Next up is the X7. It has a solid plate rather than a rear stabiliser. If you watch its wheels you'll see them spinning out quite a lot as it tries to get traction. Uh, maybe the bag in this one's a wee bit lighter because it's really struggling to stay in a straight line. Um, maybe some of that driver error as well. But shows the difference how easy the Q made it up compared to the X7. Somebody's asked me how long does the battery take to charge? Now, in all honesty, I don't know the answer to that because generally I plug the battery in, uh, leave it overnight and then disconnect it and plug it back into the trolley so it's ready for my next shot. So to me it charges overnight, that's the answer. Um, I'm finished my round just now and it's just on 50%. So what my way to do now is set up a video with a stopwatch, the battery plugged in and the app on in the background and you'll be able to see how quickly it charges. Hopefully everything's visible on the screen here. 50% on the battery. Stopwatch, which I will start now as I plug this in. As I plug it in, you'll see the app will change to green. It's on power and we'll see how long that takes. Should be interesting to find out.
So there we go, 50% to 100% took pretty much four hours on the dot, uh, which would make you think that zero to 100 would take eight hours if it was linear. Um, obviously that was incredibly sped up because sitting watching the app uh, update every percent would have been incredibly boring. Um, something I've been asked about a couple of times is the Stuart Golf app and how it seems to have some bugs in it, how it doesn't connect, it'll sit and connect, try connecting for ages and never update. Um, there's a, a wee trick to this I've found, which I will show you. First thing I have to do is quit out of this one. Easier said than done when you're sitting down here. There we go. So, open the one on the phone. And... It'll connect straight away. So, when I've been out in the course and I've been wanting to check the battery percentage, I need to kill this app and then open it again. It doesn't seem to update because it's not continually connected to the trolley when it's locked in my pocket. So on this phone, do that and slide it out of the way, shoot it away. Um, if you've got the older iPhone with the button on it, double tap the button, put you to that same screen and you can flick it out of the way. Then the next time you open it, it'll open and it'll connect and give you the percentage after a, a minute. Something else to note, um, when you're charging your battery, you don't actually need to use the app or anything to look at it. The charger, see that down here, the green light on it just now means it's 100% charged. If it's a red light, obviously it's still in the middle of charging. So I'm two and a half months into ownership now and I've done 12 rounds with the trolley. Uh, under normal circumstances, I'd have probably done more than 12 rounds in that time. However, due to COVID and some really bad weather, it's kind of been a bit of a struggle to get on the course. What I do feel like is now, after 12 rounds, that I'm in a very good position to give a full review of the trolley. Full, unbiased, unpaid, saying the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, I'm going to try and take it out in the course and do that there rather than uh, in the garage. And... I'll try and do it on my own rather than affecting mine and my playing partner's games while I stop to take videos. Uh, you might be wondering why the wheel is off the trolley here. Uh, something I noticed when I come to sit down here is, look at the screws. The screws are all orange and rusty. Now this trolley has done one round outside in the rain out of the 12 and that's what's happened. So that's not good. Uh, I don't know if that will clean off, if it's just sort of surface or if it will need these screws replaced. Either way, it doesn't look very good. Um, once again, end of the video. Thanks to everybody that's watched. Thanks to everybody who's watched the previous three. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the comments. Um, it's interesting to see what you all think. And I have tried my best to answer everyone's questions. So hopefully that's, that's worked out well. Um, stay tuned. There will be another one out, which will be the full review. I'll hopefully get that done in the next couple of weeks.